It's no secret I love elves more than any other fantasy race. They truly are perfect, and I will defend them in almost any form, be it as a faction such as the Asur or the Eldar, or as individuals such as Teclas and Eldred. I will defend almost any elven race in some capacity. Even the ones that are evil are just generally harmful. The Wood Elves are psychotic, but they're awesome. The Dark Eldar might be the only people in existence trying to out-evil the forces of Hell, but that gives them a certain charm as a faction, and if nothing else, everyone loves a good villain. But for something that will become a running theme of this video, I said I will simp for and defend almost any elf. Lord of the Rings, Warhammer, the various Dungeons and Dragons systems, I love those elves quite a bit. But as for the topic of today's video, I will not be defending these elves. I would never defend these elves in a million years. In fact, let me sum up my opinion towards them with a question. If I am not supposed to brutally slaughter every single Altmer I come across, then why is this axe especially deadly to elves? So with that in mind, let's learn about the Great War. Not the one with trenches, the one with magic and elf murder. To explain how this travesty came about, we have to look at the fourth game of the Elder Scrolls series, Oblivion. The Oblivion Crisis, where Maroon's Dagon decided invading reality was as good a way to spend a couple of weeks as any, did not only affect Cyrodiil. It's where the worst stuff went down, sure, but not the only place. All across Tamriel did the jaws of Oblivion open wide to swallow the world. Some places held out better than others. As I'm sure you're aware, because it circulated around the internet quite a bit a while ago, the Argonians not only repelled the invasion, but forced the Daedra to close their portals because they started counter-invading. Let that be a lesson to any Dunmer trying to start shit because they still think they're in Morrowind. But in other places, such as the Somerset Isles, where the High Elves of Elder Scrolls chiefly reside, it was a different story. The Daedra had ended up overrunning most of the island, and only Crystal Tower remained standing. The commanding rage Ryandor and his fellow wizards and archers killed so many Daedra that those that followed literally climbed over the defending walls on top of their fellows' corpses. This was not enough, however, and the Crystal Tower was torn apart by Daedric war machines. Just as things were about to end in total Altmer death, however, the Daedra all disappeared in an instant. We know that this was because of the efforts of the hero of Kavach and Martin Septum's sacrifice to defeat Maroon's Dagon and end his assault on Tamriel. But the High Elves knew no such thing. They only knew that they were on the brink of getting their own version of the Fall of the Eldar, and then suddenly all the demons just up and left. A quote from Lathanil of Sunhold even says that they were desperate to find out just who did this so they could thank them, because whoever shut down this invasion saved the entirety of the Somerset Isles. And then entered the Thalmor, or as you may prefer to know them as, the High Elf Nazis. The Thalmor had actually existed for a decent bit of time before this as a fringe group of radicalists. They'd once tried to unify the Somerset Isles previously in history, too. Of course, Tiber Septim and his magical Imperator Titan he borrowed from Warhammer put an end to that attempt, and even after that happened, they never really got any momentum behind their attempts at unification. But it did give them quite a grudge against Talos and his empire, which is something that, as you can probably guess, becomes pretty important going forward. Pretty much every High Elf who wasn't a Thalmor dismissed them entirely, and that was followed by them laughing at these morons for the stupid views they held. But in this one moment of weakness, where the Elves were left grasping at straws as to how to hell any of this happened, the Thalmor crept in. They began spreading news that the ending of the Oblivion Crisis was all their doing. It was the sacrifices of the Thalmor that allowed the Elves to live another day, and that perhaps it was time for all Altmer to recognize that the Thalmor were the ones who should be in charge. Plenty of people were still skeptical of their claims and outright dismissed them as fools, but in this critical moment, just enough people were willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that they were soon able to gain complete power. Dissidents were silenced, either with exile or murder, and soon enough pogroms in the isles of all those of non-Altmer blood had begun. Even that Ryandor gentleman, the High Elf who by himself almost certainly did more than every single Thalmor combined to fight the Daedra, was killed for calling these assholes out on their bullshit. They finally got their wish, uniting the Somerset Isles under the banner of the Third Aldmeri Dominion in the year 29 of the Fourth Era. It of course didn't stop there. With a coup, Valenwood and all the Wood Elves that call it home were brought under the Thalmor's wing. Elsewhere, the land of the Khajiit was made a protectorate of them as well. All the while, the Thalmor continued eliminating any High Elves who would speak out against them, until the only ones left either believed in their lunacy wholeheartedly or were too afraid of what would happen to them and their loved ones if they spoke out. The Empire of Cyrodiil, meanwhile, was in rough shape. Putting out a house fire doesn't magically fix the damage caused, after all. The Septon dynasty was dead and gone, their lands were ravaged by the Oblivion Crisis, and the Thalmor had been gobbling up the aforementioned lands of elsewhere in Valenwood while the Empire was distracted trying to catch its breath. Black Marsh had become fully independent since the Crisis, since the Argonians decided they quite liked being on their own, Marwind was in deep shit ever since the Tribunal either disappeared or were never ever reamed, and Hammerfell had a bit of an infighting problem going on. Only the provinces of High Rock, Skyrim, and Cyrodiil had any semblance of order to them. 
And do keep in mind that when I say High Rock, Skyrim, and Cyrodiil were ordered, they were ordered within the context of a continent-wide demon invasion having occurred relatively recently. That's not the kind of thing you just bounce back from. I mean, I guess, you know, the Argonians did bounce back from it, but they have the magical trees that give them god powers when they need it. Emperor Titus Mede II had come to power in the year 168 of the Fourth Era, and had just three years to get a grip on his new position before things went as far south as they could, short of another Daedric invasion. The Thalmor, in the year 171, sent a delegation with a covered wagon to the Imperial City with a rather hefty list of demands. The most important ones were as follows. Give us a shitload of money as tribute to our oh-so-wonderful empire. Seed large portions of Hammerfelt in the newly formed Dominion. Disband those goddamn blades assholes who keep interfering with our work. And perhaps most importantly of all, outlaw worship of that upstart Talos who handed us our asses on a silver platter. Otherwise, it's time for war. Titus Mead was at a crossroads very early in his career. On the one hand, he could surrender to the Thalmor in their demands. His generals and advisors warned him that the legions of the Empire were in no state to fight a war at this time. What with Tamriel still reeling from both the Oblivion Crisis and the more recent Umbriel Crisis, because in the Elder Scrolls, supernatural catastrophes happen every five minutes. On the other hand, he could stand defiant, even though it may damn well cost him not only his life, but the entire Empire and everyone in it. In no uncertain terms, Titus Mead told the Thalmor to go fuck themselves. Perhaps a bit more professionally than that, but the message was there. The Thalmor then tipped over their cart and revealed that the gift they had was the head of every single Blades agent that had been assigned to the Somerset Isles in Valenwood, and war was on. And fittingly enough for a group that's very explicitly modeled after the Nazis, the first stages of the Great War were similar to the first stages of the Second World War. Within days of war breaking out, the Thalmor had attacked all across the Empire's provinces. They had set up hidden camps near the border of Valenwood and Cyrodiil, because while the Thalmor are backstabbing, weaselly, disgusting vermin, they're also clever. Thalmor General Lord Narifin, who you should remember because he gets what he deserves later on, led attacks across Cyrodiil's southern border. The city of Leowin was quickly captured, while Bravil was besieged and small groups of Thalmor were striking all across the land. Meanwhile, a separate army led by one Lady Aranelia, which to give the Thalmor any amount of credit is perhaps the single most elf name I've ever heard in my life, to cross straight through eastern Cyrodiil into Hammerfell. While the legions had a presence in Hammerfell, as they do all provinces of the Empire, they were vastly outnumbered by the Thalmor, and so were forced to retreat through the Alakir Desert, in what is known as the March of Thirst. And you know, I couldn't find much information on that one, but let's all use some context clues and assume that it sucked for everyone involved who didn't have knives for ears. Things were going horribly for the Empire to say the least, and only a year into the war the Empire looked at the Thalmor like it was on the verge of total collapse. Of course, as I said at the beginning of the video, take note of how I worded that once again. It looked like it was about to kick the bucket. It wasn't there quite yet, though things were looking dire. Things in the war were moving at lightning speed, so allow me to do a quick overview of the situation. Southern Hammerfell had only one city left remaining, Hagathe. It's spelled like this, but I didn't know how to pronounce the word tithe until half of you yelled at me for saying it wrong, so my apologies if I'm butchering this city's name. This was exactly what the Thalmar wanted, the entire southern coast of the region, so they were content in Hammerfell to consolidate their holdings and leave it at that for the most part. In addition, by the year 172, the second year of the war, the Thalmor had continued pushing into Cyrodiil and encroached ever further into its heartland. Bravil and Anvil had fallen to the elves both, and by year's end, Narifin had pushed to the gates of the Imperial City itself. I'm sure he said something stupid and poetic along the lines of the elves have come to retake their lost empire or some bullshit like that, because Pelinol Whitestrake did one thing wrong and that was failing to finish the job. At this point, the pace of the war begins slowing down. The Thalmor, while having made tremendous gains in cutting off the Imperial City from nearly all sources of supply, couldn't keep up their early pace. Survivors from the March of Thirst had been able to regroup in northern Hammerfell and were joined by additional reinforcements. And most importantly for the Empire, they had an uncontested stream of steady reinforcements ready, willing, and able to cut a whole lot of elves into a whole lot of pieces. Remember how I said there were really only three stable Imperial nations left? One is Cyrodiil, which is covered in Thalmor at the moment. Two is High Rock, which while providing the Empire with reinforcements, is a bit too far away to reliably reinforce the homelands. But then there was Skyrim, and there weren't any Thalmor in Skyrim to keep a whole bunch of angry Nords from coming down to demonstrate to the Altmer what happened to those snow elves thousands of years ago. In the year 173, things began to change in the Imperials' favor, at least outside of Cyrodiil. The Siege of Hagatha was lifted, driving the Thalmor out and having the added bonus of cooling down the tensions between the two main factions of the region. Lady Aranelia was successful in crossing the desert to get away from the angry people with curved swords, but then she went straight into the Imperial Legions under the command of one General Decianus. At the city of... what the fuck? 
All right, well, at the city of Skaven, those two armies clashed in one of the largest battles of the war. Though the outcome wasn't really decisive for either side, Arenelia's army was weakened to the point that any further gains would be impossible. And in a defensive war, keeping the attacker from attacking any further is a good enough start as any. Now before I move on with the war itself, I want to talk to you about someone important to this little lore event here. Emperor Titus Mede II. A lot of people think he's a pushover, who signed away the Empire with the White Gold Concordat in the highest show of cowardice. This opinion is pretty prevalent both in-universe and out of it. Let me tell you why it's bullshit. Titus Mede, like I said before, was dealt a bad hand from the very start. He inherited an empire in decline, one that was almost wholly inferior from what it once was due to no fault of his own. The Thalamor were the rising power of Nern, while the empire was falling apart. The spirit of Tiber Septim himself even says that perhaps it's time for something new to take its place in Morrowind. Whether or not you side with him is up to you, but either way it clearly was a ghost of its former glory. And sure enough, barely three years into his reign, the Thalmor began threatening him, and when he tells them to go away, within days nearly their entire army is pouring into his lands. And let it be known again that his advisors all asked him not to go through with this war and accept the demands of the Thalmor. And there's not a chance in hell that at least some of them weren't Nords, the very people we've spent the last 11 and a half years listening to bitch about the treaty Mead signed. Titus Mead II stood tall against the Thalmor and did the best he possibly could. And to be frank, if you disagree, you're a goddamn fool. And nothing encapsulates this point better than the siege of the Imperial City. In the spring of 174, the Thalmor redirected pretty much their entire army towards the capital of the Empire. It was the last bastion of meaningful resistance that they cared to take. Plus, the White Gold Tower is located inside the city, and the Thalmor are very interested in those things for reasons we'll cover later. The army of Narifin attacked from the south, west, and east, while an additional army came from the north to ensure the city was completely cut off. Titus Mead once again had two options before him. He could do the classic heroic sacrifice and go down with the ship, and ensure that the few remaining months the Empire had left, he would be worshipped as a hero. Or he could do what very few people in fantasy settings do, and use his goddamn brain a bit. So, he hatched a plan. It was very simple in concept, and required a set of Skyforged steel testicles to pull off. He was going to fight his way out of the Imperial City and the Aldmeri Encirclement. The 8th Legion of the Imperial Army fought a doomed fight on the walls of the city to hold out long enough for Titus Mean and his main army to retreat away from the capital. It was a resounding success, but this is the sort of success that no one celebrates over much. With the main army gone and the 8th Legion destroyed, the Imperial City was now in Thalmor hands, and they did a whole load of wacky and silly war crimes on the inhabitants. Just elves being elves, you know. By all rights, it looked as if the Empire had well and truly lost with this. Of course, much like earlier, it only looked like that to the Thalmor. And indeed, Titus Mead was more than happy to keep the Thalmor thinking this was the case. From the winter of 174 into 175, he gave every appearance that he was getting ready to surrender. Making all sorts of motions and sending messengers to the right stuck-up pointy-eared pricks, that sort of thing. And then immediately afterward, he was getting ready for the last Hail Mary of the war. General Decianus, the general who had fought at the city named after Ratman, had been ordered to come assist Cyrodiil rather than continue fighting the Aldmeri in Hammerfell. While he complied with his emperor, he discharged as many invalids from the army as possible to help keep the province at least somewhat secure. You might be wondering how that helped in any way, understandably so. The thing is, invalids isn't the largest quotation marks possible. He'd walk around and go, how's your arm feeling today, soldier? And if they said something along the lines of, eh, you know, slept on it kinda funny, but it's alright, he'd tell them they were not fit for active duty in Cyrodiil and were to be discharged to remain in Hammerfell. It was simply a happy coincidence, no doubt, that these men were allowed to form their own army to drive back the elves from Hammerfell later on. Regardless, Decianus and his remaining forces then marched home to heed the Emperor's call. In the year 175, Emperor Titus Mede committed all of his available forces to one final desperate gambit. He assembled General Decianus and his remaining legionnaires, who the Athalmor assumed was actually still in Hammerfell as a result of the legionnaires he left behind. In addition to this was an army of Nords led by one General Jonah and a final army led by himself. At least I'm gonna keep saying it was led by him. That Blades game on mobile or whatever the hell it was invented a whole player character and had him replace Titus Mead. But if Bethesda can drag and break their own cannon away, then I can too. So we're gonna go with it was Titus Mead himself who led this army. The battle to retake the Imperial City was to be known as the Battle of the Red Ring, which is something most people who played Oblivion or Skyrim on an original Xbox 360 would be familiar with. It pains me there's people who won't get that joke because they're not old enough. General Decianus and his forces came at the city from the west, while Jonah and the Nords came from the south. 
Though the Thalmor did launch several counterattacks, especially on Jonah's army, they were unsuccessful in driving it off, and Titus Mead led his forces into the fray on the fifth day of the battle, gunning it directly for the Imperial City. Wielding the legendary blade Goldbrand, a sword cleverly named after the fact it is gold, he carved his way into his capital and took it back. The Thalmor tried to get the hell out of Dodge and were promptly met by a shield wall of Nords, all too happy to send them to whatever pagan hell the Altmer believe in. Probably Chicago or something like that. General Narifin himself was captured alongside the Imperial City, and was kept alive for over a month straight, hanging off the White Gold Tower. It's not known where he was buried, and some sources say he was carried off by a Daedra at the end of his stay in Hotel Cyrodiil. Look no further for proof that Thalmor are the worst than the Daedra helping this guy out. Personally, I like to think they just chucked him in some plot of land being used for farming. His corpse would then go on to become fertilizer, doing more for the people of Nern than it ever did when it was alive. With this resounding success, a large majority of the Thalmor army in Cyrodiil had been completely obliterated, and the Empire was able to force a peace deal with the Thalmor known as the White Gold Concordat. The aftermath of this piece of paper is quite well known, and I'm sure you're aware of the big sticking points. I'm gonna assume you have played Skyrim or watched people play it or have been on the internet in the past 10 years, but for the sake of a complete video, I'll go over the big points. Ultimately, the provisions forced on the Empire were a little different than the ones in the initial demands that Thalmor sent. Southern Hammerfell ended up being given over to the Thalmor, despite not only the bloody battle at Skaven, but the Imperial remnants waging a war against the Thalmor alongside the native Red Guards. The blades were disbanded, and the survivors were to be hunted down by the Thalmor agents in the coming years. And of course, Talos was no longer to be worshipped as a deity by the humans of Tamriel, and the Thalmor were allowed more or less open access to the Empire to ensure worship didn't occur. Any followers of the man-god found were to be dealt with lethally. And of course, all of this had some pretty drastic consequences. Hammerfell was outraged by what they saw as Cyrodiil handing away its independence. They felt that the Thalmor could have been defeated once and for all if the Empire had just kept going, and so they waged their own war against the Elves. The Empire was forced to abandon any claims to the region and recognize it as its own independent province because of this. Hammerfell was successful in dealing with the Thalmor, which lends some credence to their claims, although at least personally I find it understandable the Empire did what it did. Their armies were barely holding on as it was, and while the Thalmor and the region were annihilated, there were plenty more elves in the Somerset Isles. And while this may be cheating, the loading screens for Skyrim say what the blades in the game do. It was either this or complete destruction for the Empire. Speaking of the Blades, this was perhaps the least consequential of the major stipulations of the treaty. While plenty of knowledge and capable agents were no doubt lost as the Thalmor hunted them down, in the end, the Empire just formed the Penitus Oculatus to replace the Blades as the Emperor's bodyguards. You can argue that they weren't as effective as the Blades, but both of them were the bodyguards when an Emperor was assassinated during his rule, so it's not like their track record is any worse. If nothing else, the Oculatus never tried to get me to kill Parthenax. And of course, Talos' worship being outlawed made a whole load of people unhappy. At first, the Empire just went yeah, bro, we're totally not allowing Talos worship. Trust me, bro, I promise. And then Thalmor Justiciar started walking around the Empire purging worshippers, and the treaty was actually enforced from then on out. Not much by the Empire, granted, but by the Thalmor agents. Cyrodiil no doubt had some strife regarding this, but in Skyrim, this is where things got real spicy. I won't go too much into detail on it because you have no doubt played Skyrim, but the Nords of the region were quite unhappy with this, and a large portion of them led by Ulfric Stormcloak did their damnedest to rebel from the Empire they saw as forcing unfair obligations on other people. The Nords in particular were so angry because not only were they forced to follow the Concordat despite the Thalmor never having gotten to their lands, they also believed Tyrus Septim was one of them. Nobody tell the Nords he was probably a Breton. Both sides know damn well that war in the future is inevitable. Hell, the Thalmor call it the first war with the Empire. You don't call something the first if you don't plan on there being a second. Both sides are making their own preparations to get ready for round two. The Thalmor don't intend to lose this time, and with Skyrim erupting into civil war, things look grim for the Empire. But hey, at least the Empire didn't have to give the Thalmor all that gold, right? That's something. If nothing else, assuming you play Skyrim like me, you've probably killed more Thalmor throughout the course of your playthrough than died in this entire war. And if you allow me to speculate, there's one more thing to consider. Historically, in the Elder Scrolls, avatars of the dead god Lorcan have a habit of appearing whenever elves really need to die as soon as possible. Ysgrimor and his fancy axe weren't one, though one of his 500 companions likely was, and of course, Pelinal Whitestrake was almost certainly another such case. He'd suffocate you with moths if you tried to say that to his face, but among being a cyborg time traveler, he's probably also an avatar of Lorcan. 
And of course, history's greatest elf hater. Space Marines have nothing on the level of hatred Pelinol White Whitestrake has for elves. Who's to say that in the coming second war against the Thalmor, another one of these figures won't pop up? But for now, the story of the Great War for Tamriel is over. Unlike many background events and fantasy stories, the war is a living memory for many people in the setting. And if I remember correctly, Bethesda said we'll see the outcome of the Skyrim Civil War in the next Elder Scrolls game, which will no doubt be released sometime within the next century. So look forward to that, my fellow haters of Mur. We'll have our revenge. Yet. Thank you, of course, to my wonderful channel members. You are the towers to my mundus, keeping me from dissolving back into oblivion. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. What are you doing? Is this how you honor the Sixth House and the Tribe Unmourned? What a fool. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocent. Shame on you. <laughs> Too late for my mercy. Finally awake.